All right, we're going to continue with Unit 6, uh, Module 6, and the Pythagorean Theorem on the Coordinate Plane. This is an advanced lesson, so if you're taking the class for advanced credit, continue watching, take notes, and make sure you complete the assignment. If you're not taking this for advanced credit, you can watch it too. Um, you just don't have to do the assignment at the end. So we're going to start with our vocabulary. We have the coordinate plane, also known as the Cartesian plane, but we're really going to call it the coordinate plane. It's an x-axis and a y-axis that meet at a right angle at a center point called the origin. It's a graph. It's what we know of as a graph. Then we have ordered pairs, a coordinate or point written in the form x comma y. Then we have the origin, which is the center of the coordinate plane. It's expressed with an ordered pair of 0 comma 0, where the x-axis and the y-axis intersect. Then we have the x-axis, which is the horizontal number line. And then we have the y-axis, which is the vertical number line. OK, so make sure you pause. Add these to your notes, and when you're done, click Continue. So let's practice finding the distance between two points. What is the distance from 2, 4 to 2, 3? So let's go ahead and mark it. 2, 4, and 2, negative 3. So really, we just have a vertical line here. If it is a vertical or horizontal line, it's going to be really easy to find the distance. We really just have to take um, the line and count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the distance is 7 units. But there is a rule that we can follow. I'm going to go ahead and write it down here. So distance on a number line. On a number line, and that's a vertical number line or a horizontal number line, the distance between points A and whoops, B is the absolute value of A minus B. The reason it's absolute value is because distance can't be negative. OK, so if we practice that with another set of numbers, let's see, what would be the distance between, well, let's use the same numbers. So we've got the distance between 2, 4, and 2, 3. Right now, the 2s are the same. Like, so that's not a distance there. So we're really just taking the absolute value of 4 minus negative 3. Well, 4 minus negative 3 is 4 plus 3. The absolute value of 4 plus 3 is 7. So our answers were the same. We just did two different things to get to them. We could have also had a question. Let me see what my next question is going to be. OK, let's just change this really quickly. And I'm going to give you another example. So let's say we want to find the distance between 7, negative 2, and four, negative two. So again, see how now the y's are exactly the same? So this would be a horizontal line. I went a little too big to kind of, so the point would be over here. I'm sorry, the point would be over here. And then four would be over here. So now it's a 
horizontal line because the y's are exactly the same, so there's no vertical distance there. So all we have to do is 7 minus 4, the absolute, absolute value of 7 minus 4, and the distance would be 3 on this separate example. Okay, now let's move on to finding the distance on a coordinate plane using a right triangle. So we saw vertical and horizontal lines. Those were really pretty easy. We could just count if we needed to. But what if the line was slanted? So let's find the answer to the distance between 3, 5, 2, 6, 1. So we've got 3, 5, and we've got 6, 1. We need to find this distance. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to make a triangle in a right triangle, really, specifically a right triangle. So I can create a vertical line here and a horizontal line here, and this is a right angle. I could, I don't wanna confuse you, but I could also create a right triangle this way. And I used yellow because I don't really want it to jump out, but um, either way, it's not gonna change the distances or anything. So just know that there's, there's two triangles that you could make, and um, there isn't a wrong one. So let's go ahead and find all our little ordered pairs. So we've got 3, 1. We've got 3, 5. Whoops. And then we've got 6, 1. Okay, so we really just added one new point. And let's find the side lengths, okay? So the first step, we needed to find the vertical and horizontal lines. The next thing is we're gonna find the side lengths. And this could be easily done counting, one, two, three, four. Or we could do three, one, minus three, five, which is, I always like to subtract the bigger number first, 5 minus 1, which is 4. So we did it two different ways. We got the same answer. Now let's find the distance here. 1, 2, 3. So the distance on the shorter leg is 3. We could also find that by doing 3, 1, and 6, 1. Remember, the 1s are exactly the same, so we're just doing 6 minus 3, which is 3. So again, two different ways, same answer. So now we have two legs of a right triangle. And we have four, we have three, and we need to find this one over here. Remember the Pythagorean theorem? I'm gonna say one more thing, but I'm gonna, we're gonna solve this first and then we'll go back to that. I'm wondering if anyone else is thinking it. But the Pythagorean theorem, remember it says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I have three squared plus four squared equals c squared. Nine plus 16 equals c squared. 25 equals c squared. Then we square root both sides and c equals five. Now, did anyone remember your Pythagorean triple three, four, five triangle, because that would have saved us all that little purple work over there if we had remembered that a three, four, five is a right triangle. It's one of those triplets that we can memorize. So the missing side is five. All right, let's go ahead and do another one. Um, let's do negative eight, four and negative eight, 12. I'm gonna count by twos here. So this is gonna be negative two, negative four, negative six, negative, well, that didn't quite work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I don't have to count by twos. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then still negative eight, but this time it's going up to 12, which is gonna be like up here. 
okay? So again, it's just a vertical line. We could count, but we could also take the four and the 12 and just do 12 minus four and get eight. Now, if you didn't subtract it that way, you could do four minus 12, you would get the absolute value of negative eight, which is still eight. The answer is still eight. It doesn't really matter which order you subtract it in. When you're taking the absolute value, it's always the distance from zero, and that distance is always a positive number. I can't say always positive a number because zero can be an answer and zero is not positive or negative. So just kind of throwing that out there. Um, let me check really quickly. Yes, this is our next problem. Okay, so we have negative one, zero, and we have three, four. Two, three, one, two, three, four, four. Okay, so we wanna find that missing side. So remember, we're gonna make our legs, and it's pretty easy to count those legs. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So unfortunately, this one is not a Pythagorean triplet. So we counted our sides. Just to review, we could, we need to find that other point, which is three, zero. So we can find the distance between three, zero and negative one, zero, which is three minus negative one which is three plus one, which is four. And then we can find the distance from three zero to three four. And this time we're gonna do zero minus four, which is negative four, which is the absolute value becomes a positive four. So we solve the legs two different ways. I'm only doing that so that you can get comfortable with both ways. Um, and then let's find our Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Four squared plus four squared equals C squared. 16 plus 16 equals C squared. 32 equals C squared. And then we're going to take the square root of both sides. And C equals actually approximately let me erase that. C is approximately 5.66. All right, so I believe we've got one more. So Kevin needs to run errands. If he starts at the gas station and goes to the dry cleaners, then to the grocery store and back to the gas station, how many miles did he travel? So we really just want to find all three distances and add them together, right? Pretty simple. So we can start by adding one, two, three, four. We've got four on the one side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the other side. Now, just in case we have bad eyes or we miss a line, I wanna do the actual work. So we need the points. The dry cleaner is 5, 1. The gas station is 5, 5. Probably would have been better if I'd written these down before I drew all over the page. And then the grocery store is negative 3, 5. So now we're just going to take two points and find the distance. 5 minus 1, whoops, absolute value is 4. So that's what we found over there. We're correct. And then we're going to try to do um, 5, 5, and negative 3, 5. So now we're going to do the distance on these. The 5s are the same. So we're going to do 5 minus negative 3. 5 minus negative 3 is 5 plus 3. And 5 plus 3 is 8. So right now we've double checked our legs, and we are good. Now, is there a 4H triplet that we can look at? Nope, unfortunately there is not. So we're gonna have to do A squared plus B 
squared equals c squared. 4 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. 16 plus 64 equals c squared. 80 equals c squared. And then we take the square root. C equals approximately 8.94. But that's not our answer. Remember, our answer was the total distance. How many miles did he travel? So now we have to take 4 plus 8 plus 8.94, and that will equal approximately 20.94 miles. All right, so remember, try your assignment, do the best you can. If you have any problems or questions, um, go back to your notes, look at your, um, there we go, look at your lessons, look at your notes, go back and watch this recording again, and if you don't do well, redo it. Just make sure you've gone back and you've read over some stuff, found the wrong answers on your current assignment before you redo it. Good luck and have a great day.